Welcome back, ladies and gents. You may have noticed a pretty substantial change to the background. It's the first time I'm recording a review that's at a place other than my dining room table. Uh, kind of in the middle of obtaining a new setup somewhere to grant me a little more freedom to record whenever I want to. Because time has never been on my side with these things. But as you can see, I have a review for a brand new masterpiece figure that I am extremely excited to get. And that figure is MP41 Beast Wars Dinobot. Cybertron Frontline Combat, in case you were wondering. And the box is a pretty decent size. It's bigger than most masterpieces. It's not as big as the largest figures out there. You know, it's not a, a Megatron or an Ultra Magnus size box, but still pretty good size. You can see it's got the Beast Wars 20th anniversary logo on there. Just another example of Takara picking up that ball Hasbro dropped when it came to the Beast Wars 20th. So thanks Takara for not forgetting about, you know, the best series in Transformers. But it's got this really nice picture of Dinobot in his Raptor mode, along with his robot mode being all combat ready. That robot mode picture extends a bit to the top of the box. We can see nice shiny letters right there. Looks very good. Spin around here. You can see Raptor mode Dinobot holding the golden disc. Looking like he's yelling at Rap Trap or something. Back of the box shows off pretty much everything there is to see with this figure. Got all the features for both of his modes. Shows his CGI models that the toy is based off of. All the accessories and all that fun stuff that we'll cover. Nice little group shot of him and the other two Maximals to receive the Masterpiece treatment so far. Which, sadly, I don't have, but maybe soon. This guy's got me more tempted to pick them up more than ever. And on this side, got Dinobot shooting eye lasers. And then the bottom is pretty unremarkable. Text I can't read. Alright, so we've seen the outside. Let's go ahead and crack it open and see what's inside. And here's everything that's inside. Got obviously Dinobot himself, comes packaged in his Raptor mode. He does come with a tail not attached to him, so I've gone and just assembled him completely. You have this large display base set up over here that's actually three pieces. You have this crane arm bit, and then two squares that have different kind of mechanical detailing on them, and they can actually be arranged in any way. I've gone ahead and gone with the arrangement that the instructions show. He has the golden disc on a little clear plastic holder. We'll get a closer look at that in a moment. Clear piece for eye lasers, three alternate heads for the robot mode, and then two clear plastic pieces that are used to help display him on that figure base. And then over here you can see he's got instructions and a little character card. Okay, first I want to take a look at his instructions. You can see it's a pretty good size instruction manual. Nice glossy paper, and it unfolds to be quite large. Oh, oy vey. It's very big. So, it has very detailed instructions, which uses computer generated pictures. So, a lot of detail there, which is very nice. Shows you how to transform them from his Raptor mode to his robot mode. Gives you a list of all the different parts that he comes with. Shows you about how to assemble him when you first take him out of the box and you know, attach his tail and all that. Flip side just finishes up the transformation. Shows you how the base works. Shows you how to attach him to his display piece adapters there. Get him set up. And then the bottom bit just kind of shows off his features like the back of the box does. With a little bit of nice illustration there. There's also this small piece of paper that comes in the box and just seems to show off the posability of the tail and how you kind of separate the halves when you want to transform it. And I think this is kind of an afterthought. They realized that they didn't include anything in the instructions to explain this, so it's just a little extra card to go with it to prevent any confusion. And then we have the character card, which is uh, set against the backdrop of the old Beast Wars image of know, some sort of red dinosaur thing with a green eye. It used to be on the back of all their blister cards and their boxes and packaging. And it, it's, the whole card's done in a way to be reminiscent of the tech spec cards that came with the original Beast Wars toys. 
even though the artwork is kind of a step above what we got, it's still done in a way that evokes the aggressive battle poses from the old, you know, 1990s Beast Wars line. So got all his designations here. Flip it on the back. Shows off his two modes. Got his tech spec numbers. It's really nice. And they're a dead match for the tech spec numbers for his original toy, which is pretty cool. It's got some uh, stats here. It's his height and weight, I'm guessing. And a whole bunch of Japanese I can't read. Probably a cool bio. Wish I knew what it said. But yeah, definitely digging this card. Looks a little out of place next to other Masterpiece cards, but when placed with current and upcoming Beast Wars Masterpiece figures, I'm sure it looks really great. Now I definitely want to show off my favorite accessory, the Golden Disc. You can see it's done up with this very nice gold paint. It's got a lot of sculpted detail. Has the title, The Sounds of Earth, on it, just like you saw in the CGI model from the show. And you flip it over, and it has all this cool, you know, sci-fi, Cybertronian-looking symbols going on there. So they put a lot of effort into this very simple little disc of an accessory. But it just makes it look fantastic. The disc has this little clear stand for it. So when it's not being held or attached to anything, it can just kind of sit there like that and be displayed, which is very nice. And the stand has this little extra piece on here. Twist off. And this little piece is a clip. And it can be used to clip the disc into multiple places. You can either clip it into Dinobot's Raptor or Robot hand. Now we have Dinobot himself, starting out in his Velociraptor alt mode. And at first glance, he is pretty much a dead ringer for the CGI model. You know, if you squint a little bit. Obviously, you know, he's got visible panels, little robot chunks showing underneath, which, given the task that Takara had to work through with creating a functional Dinobot off of a CGI model that completely cheated the transformation by just swapping out parts out of thin air, it really is, I think, the best any human being can do. The robot kibble does get a little more egregious if you turn him around. You can see that his entire butt is robo chunks. It's kind of an eyesore. It's a good thing most people wouldn't want to uh, display him facing backwards. But again, given what they were tasked to create, I'm not going to let that ruin it for me. So his head is articulated at the jaw here. Mouth can open and close. His tongue can wag around inside of his mouth. His neck is very articulated. He can go up and down this way. He can bend at that second joint. Turns at the third joint there. Can even move forward a little bit. But moving forward kind of splits his chest open, so it doesn't look very good. Arms are nice and articulated. They're on a ball joint at the shoulder. Typical hinges at the elbow and wrist. So very poseable. The legs are poseable to an extent. Um, yeah, you can kind of adjust the bend of like his knee and his ankle and all that. The hips don't move very much in this mode. So that's one thing. I'm, I'm not really sure what's keeping him from moving well, and I don't want to force it and break it. But his standing pose is kind of neutral. And then his tail is very articulated. Once you get about halfway down here, you have this back and forth wagging. Then you have one two, three hinges that go up and down. So you can pose his tail a lot of ways. And yeah, it looks a little rigid, a little mechanical, because, I mean, it is mechanical. It's a plastic toy, so it's not going to be as uh, organic looking as a real raptor's tail would. But it does allow you to pull off some pretty nice poses. Another great feature that he has in his raptor mode is that he has an alternate set of eyes that you access just by lifting up the top of his head then rotating his eyes, flipping it back down. And now he has these extra angry, extra squinty eyes, which work really well for poses of him having some sort of verbal exchange with Rat Trap or being ready to pounce on something. So I love that they put that customization in there, even for his alternate mode. He honestly looks very expressive and very much alive with either um, eyeball option there. 
So I do love that they did that. The only thing that I don't love about his Raptor mode is that he is hard to balance. He's very prone to flopping forward or backwards because the hinges that his ankles rest on aren't extremely tight and he is, he's fairly heavy. It's a bulky toy, so he tends to flop around under his own weight. I do like the nice gold claws that he's got. Very nice looking, little sickle talons there. As I mentioned before, the golden discs, little clear clip, allows Dinobot to hold onto it, and you can see him doing so here in the Raptor mode. And he's just got these holes in the palms of his hands that allow you to put the clip in there so he can hold it in a bunch of different ways. He can also drop it because his handler is incompetent. But it is a really great touch that just makes the toy continue to seem very much alive. I want to talk a little more about the display stand. As I mentioned before, it is three pieces. You have the two squares here, which can plug in any which way. Then you have the central piece that plugs in along the middle line there to hold it together. And you got this crane arm thing. And it's very articulated for being, you know, just an accessory. But basically, you see all these little notches here? allows you to adjust the height of the arm. So if you want it lower, just pull this forward and lock it in. If you want it higher up, pull this back. And then this little top bit goes up and down. A little side to side too, so you can get really creative with these poses. In order to attach Dinobot's Beast Mode to that display stand, you need one of those accessory pieces that I showed you. This little clear plastic thing here has a little hinge. and. You have to attach a Dinobot, so you actually have to pull open his belly a little bit. Come on. Open that up. You hook this guy up by just pressing it in there until it kind of locks in. And then you swing the belly back shut over top of it. Just peg back in. And you've got this little clear plastic piece coming out of his belly there. So then you just take him line up the hole on the underside of that adapter with the peg at the top of this. Plug it in there carefully. Make sure it's in there. And now your Dinobot's suspended. Then you can make adjustments to the height and the angle and everything to put them in some cool action pose. Maybe something along those lines, you know, make him look like he's charging into battle. But it's up to you. The possibilities are almost endless. But now that we've gotten a good look at the Raptor mode, it's time to go to the main course, his robot mode. And after a good, I don't know, 15 minutes of excruciating transformation, we now have Dinobot's robot mode. And this is by far the most show accurate robot mode any Dinobot figures ever had. He has all the extra detailing that his CGI model kind of just poofed into thin air when he transformed that none of the other toys were able to emulate. And he achieves this almost magic conversion by just completely cheating his transformation, just like the CGI model does. For instance, the raptor head on his chest is obviously not the raptor head that we saw in his alternate mode. It's actually made up of his raptor belly, that same piece that we flipped down to attach his little uh, display stand adapter. You just kind of shift panels around, it becomes top of a raptor head. It's very cool. You also notice that his fingers, while you know in the show meant to be his raptor claws, his raptor toes just turned into hands, obviously aren't the same parts as his actual raptor claws. Those actually get tucked away up inside the back of his upper arm there. But his uh his detailing, the colors on him, the paint applications are just perfect. I can't spot any real noticeable blemish in his uh, paint scheme at all. Yeah, he's uh, very wide up top. He may be a tiny bit off on the proportions because of how much of the raptor body has to be crammed inside of his abdomen there to make it work. You can see back here despite their best efforts of making him look like a closed package, you see raptor chunks on the inside. And getting this all closed up and fitting in here is probably the hardest part of the transformation, getting panels just to line up perfectly to where 
you don't have an issue keeping them together. So it's kind of like cramming a bunch of stuff in a suitcase and just slamming it shut till you get the zipper to go across. Which is unfortunate. I wish it were a little less sloppy there, but you know, if you do it right, you have some patience, think it through, ends up creating a very, very nice looking robot. So he's got these spine details, got all the ribs on his legs like you'd expect. The gold on him is just perfect. That face though, look at the detailing. His helmet is just spot on. The face is very detailed, all those tiny little teeth, red eyes. And yeah, you know, this is one of several alternate heads. We'll get a look at each one of those. Now you might be wondering where his weapons are. I have it right here. This is his tail assembly. See the end of the tail has been kind of folded back on itself there. And the little sword piece is in here. Now what's great is that this figure takes a cue from the original toy and it lets you store his weapons on his back. So what you do is you kind of open this up, press it down onto these little oh geez, these little pegs here. Make sure it's on there nice and tight. And you just kind of swing it down. So he's got storage for his weapons in case you don't want him holding on to them. So that's very handy. Looks pretty clean on there. Glad they included that little extra bit to make it all work out. Another great thing to point out with his robot mode is just how articulated his hands are. And his arms as a whole, but especially the hands. Each one of his main fingers is individually articulated at the knuckle and then at the last digit there. So you can do a whole lot with that. And then his double thumbs are stuck together, but also articulated at the knuckle and last digit. So looks really good. Allows him to be very dynamic with his posing, something I very much enjoy. Now to get a better look at his weapons, I'm going to go ahead and split this right down the middle. Pop it open, pull out your sword, and you're going to unfold it. Blade straightens out, handle goes into place like that. And you can see it's nice and vacuum metalized to look chrome. You may also notice that it's got a pinkish hue to it, which I found odd because from you know, what I could always tell watching the Beast Wars show, this was meant to just be plain silver, plain chrome. So I'm not entirely sure why there's the pink hue to it. It looks a little odd. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just didn't notice that it was slightly pink before. But as a whole, the sword looks pretty nice. And then the main part of the tail becomes his, you know, spinning blade shield type accessory. It's very neat. And it's locked into place right now. You can flip this little bit down here. And lo and behold, it has the same functionality as the original toy. It's got a little motor in there. You press the button in and this spins. So you can emulate the spinning action for the actual weapon, which is just awesome. See the inside, it's made to look very fleshy, like a CGI model. Here's Dinobot actually wielding his weapons. And one thing that's really great about his little vertebrae sword here is that he can wield it one of two ways. This way is actually how the original toy would hold it. He would hold it kind of sticking straight out, which pretty unnatural pose for a sword, but it's really cool that they did include that little nod there. Or alternatively, you can have him hold the sword properly and more accurately to his cartoon depiction. So it's really up to you. How do you want to do it? I, th I imagine most people are going to have him hold it like this. The fact that he still has the, the working spinning mechanism for his little rotor blade there is just fantastic. And I mean, I, I honestly can't fathom a way they could have made this toy any better representation of Dinobot's robot mode. I mean, he looks like he just jumped right off the screen. Aside from, you know, some small little details, seam showing and stuff, but he's just great. Just to show you how much of an improvement this toy is over the original, here is a sample of the original Dinobot mold. This is particularly the Beast Wars 20th anniversary one. And you might notice that some of his fingers are broken off. 
and uh, that leads me into a warning. Never buy this version of the figure. As really nice as the colors look on it, the entire toy is made of like gold flecked plastic, which means it suffers from the very unfortunate phenomenon known as gold plastic syndrome. So this entire thing, very brittle, prone to breakage. In fact, if I were to take it in my hand and just squeeze it, it would just, it would just crumble. It would just be crushed because that's how fragile it's become. So it's a real shame because it's a good looking toy. It's not the best version of that mold. Um, probably the Japanese Beast Wars 10th anniversary version would be better because it's not prone to falling apart on you. And they actually painted a little mouth on his faceplate to make him a little more show accurate. But yeah, just to give you an idea of how vastly different this new toy looks compared to the original mold. I mean, there's, you know, the, the major cues obviously are there because it's what they base the CGI model on, but the proportions are so different. He's kind of goofy looking, but uh, yeah. Clear winner right here. This this thing doesn't even come close. It's sad in hindsight. All right, now to talk about the many faces of Dinobot. The face that he has here is but one of four. This is kind of his uh, scowling battle face. And you can see on here he has red eyes, just like he does in the show. And there's a button you press in the back of his helmet that causes said eyes to light up like so, making him look even cooler. Now the lights are on a timer. They go off after several seconds. There's no way to turn them off early. There's no way to keep them on. See, they kind of fade back to dark. I do like the fact that even without the lights on, you can see that his eyes are red. A lot of Transformers with light up eyes or light piping features, their eyes just look pitch black when there's no light going through them. So he looks great either way. Using the light up feature does require two, um, what are called LR44 batteries. They get installed in the back of his head there. They're not included with the toy, so you do have to buy them. It's like eight bucks for a three pack of them. So a little pricey. And I have heard reports that this toy does have severe battery leakage. That apparently the batteries will run out after just a few days. I just put them in today on mine, so I, I don't know how true that is. But there's uh, some reports of the batteries drain even when the light up feature is not in use. So I would say be careful. Um, the smartest thing to do would probably be remove the batteries when they're not in use because you don't want to drain them completely and then have the batteries explode and get battery acid all on the inside of the connector pieces because I've had that happen. It happened actually to my original Optimus. Optimus. His, uh, his connection points are pretty much shot. Like he does not light up anymore. So I would avoid having something like that happen to figure this nice. But anyway, let's take a look at his alternate faces. In order to change him, you just kind of grab him right about here, pull his face off, and unfortunately, unlike a lot of his other masterpiece compatriots, there's no cool detailing underneath. It's just a light bulb and some wiring. Oh yeah, also worth pointing out, all of his mouths open and close. He can be completely shut, he look all grumpy, he can be open like he's yelling, he can be way open like he's about to eat your face off. So, probably should have mentioned that earlier, but yeah, they all do that, which is nice. Here's Dinobot's smirking face, which I think is probably my favorite one. Just him kind of being a snarky arse. It's perfect for him just, you know, telling off Rat Trap or something, or realizing he's got his opponent corner, he's about to tear him apart. So I do like this one. And yeah, just like the other one. Mouth moves, so you can kind of have it open like he's snarkily talking to somebody. Here's his more agitated looking face. It's even with his mouth closed, he's gritting his teeth a little bit. Eyes are a little bit wider, so his brow is not as furrowed. So this could also be used as a good battle pose or just him looking kind of taken aback or ticked off about something. So, you know, rawr, I'm angry. All right, and lastly, we have his face with the clear eyes. And aside from the lack of red pigment on the eyes, this face is identical to the last one we just looked at. So same structure. And what this does is allow the LED light to shine through, you know, unfiltered. 
So you press the button again, and the first time you press it, it glows reddish orange color, just like how it pretty much looks with all the other eyes. So nothing special there, but the secret to this is that, let's try to turn off, all right, press it, and then while it's on, hold the button down, bam, switches to green. And the green light in his eyes is used to show when he's charging up his eye lasers. So his eyes will switch to a green state just before the lasers actually come out. So it looks good just, you know, as is, but it's really meant to go with this accessory, which is a pair of eye lasers. So very cool looking. So you just press the lasers to his face and they'll just kind of rest there inside of his eyes. You go ahead and press the button. You could have red looking lasers if you want, but what you're really supposed to do is bam, turn them green. And you get this light piping effect through the laser piece themselves. Now admittedly, it's not a very strong effect. Uh, probably looks better in the dark. The light doesn't do a very good job of traveling down the length of the plastic laser blades. But it is a very cool effect. You know, it just kind of makes him even more of a complete package because you're able to recreate virtually any scene that Dinobot's in from Beast Wars. So they, they really thought this through. You know, the, the extra accessories he, he comes with really helps sell him. And now to see how Dinobot interacts with his display stand in his robot mode, we have one more adapter here, which actually pegs right onto Dinobot's butt. Three little pegs that slide into holes there. Kind of creates a little diaper for him. Which looks, looks a little silly from the back, but. And then you just adjust the base however you want to. Bring it up as high as you do or do not want. And you just suspend them there like that. And then adjust them accordingly. So there you go, we got him leaping in action. Weapons drawn, ready to kill. So yeah, it's a great way to just have fun with this toy, to display it in any way that you want to, kind of recreate any action that you want to keep Dinobot posed in. And this is definitely the best display stand accessory I've seen from the Masterpiece line so far. The other ones weren't all that impressive, felt pretty cheap, but they put a lot of effort into this one, so I dig it. But yeah, that's uh, all that I have left to say on this guy. I could spend another 30 minutes gushing over how much I love the toy, but I think you get the idea by now. I am 100% impressed. I, I can't imagine a Dinobot masterpiece turning out any better than this. I mean, he just gives me that vibe of jumping right off of my old you know, CRT television from the 90s, and I just absolutely love him. And he's got me excited for you know, what they can do with other Beast Wars characters in the future. As some of you might know, the next Beast Wars masterpiece toy that's going to come out is uh, Beast Wars Megatron, who is a good bit bigger than even Dinobot, because they're trying to keep these guys in scale with each other in the robot modes anyway. And that thing is going to run about, on average, about $320 to get it imported from Japan, or actually, that one's being sold stateside too, but also $320. Don't know how many of you are willing to put down that type of dough on a plastic toy, but I gotta tell you, this uh, this Dinobot was $250, which I will admit at first had turned me off to the toy, but I eventually decided I just really needed him. But yeah, uh, this guy's $250, and one of the best masterpiece figures I've ever seen, so he kind of warrants that price point. And if Megatron's gonna be just as good as him, and a lot bigger, I can I can see picking them up for three hundred twenty dollars. My wife might not agree with me on that one, but uh, hey, you know, gotta do what you gotta do. So yeah, I uh, hope y'all enjoyed this look at Masterpiece Dinobot. I was super eager to show this guy off to everybody because I just absolutely love it. After waiting months for him to come out, I'm so happy I finally have one. But yeah, let me know what you think of this toy. Would you like to have him in your collection? Do you think he could have been done better? Is there anything? about this figure that I didn't touch on that you would have liked to have seen, you know, feel free to let me know. And with everything said that needs to be said, 
I will see you all next time.